So I recently found the biggest downside to riding an aluminum frame and it really wasn't what I was expecting. What up, it's Brandon here. So I've been skating metal frames for around a year and a half now and if you've been following this channel at all, you know I'm a huge fan of the solar frames and just aluminum frames in general. From the moment I saw the first picture of these frames here, I knew I had to get them and got them as soon as I could. I then went on to test them on every obstacle I could possibly think of. That's everything from rail to ledge to concrete ledge to bowl to coping, just absolutely everything to try to see if there was any downside to having a metal frame. And I thought I came to the conclusion that there was none and that you weren't limited to skating park and that you could use a metal frame to skate both park and street and still be able to do every trick. That changed a little bit once I got these frames here, the symmetric aluminum flat frame. They have this nice big piece of plastic here and from the first session on these, I noticed that top sides were a lot easier to do and that's purely just because of this plastic here. So my thoughts had slightly changed, you were disadvantaged a little bit, but you weren't limited completely, top sides were still possible, they were just a lot harder in a metal frame. And when you think about it, it makes sense that top sides would suffer. Top sides are the only trick you'll be doing where all your weight is actually grinding on metal. Because if you have a plastic H block, if you're doing a sole, you're doing a groove trick, you're doing a royale, most of your weight is on plastic. So they should slide pretty close to how a plastic frame would slide. But when it comes to a top side, your weight is on the metal and that's why that one suffers. It suffers the same way a full metal frame does. So if you skate this with a metal H block, uh, you're definitely limited when it comes to street because they don't slide well on concrete. You can still do grinds, I could do it, which is proof that anyone could do it, but it really eats the ground, like it just doesn't slide nice. Even good marble ledges don't slide nice. But regardless, whether it's fully metal or has a plastic H block, both of them perform fine when it comes to rail or coping. There's no downsides, it's just ledge. And even on ledge, everything's still possible. You can do it, it's just a little bit harder when it's metal. So I went on skating these on street and park, not finding anything wrong with them, thinking I'd come to the a final conclusion about these frames. It wasn't until very recently that I found the real big downside to having a metal frame, and that is shock absorption. So the biggest pro to a metal frame is its responsiveness, but the trade-off for that is there is no give in the frame. This means if you ride a skate that doesn't have shocks, like the M12, you can kill your heels on an average drop, and that's what happened to me. And now because of the setup and one trick, I haven't been able to skate for three months. And I do really think that it's because of the combination of the setup I had there, a boot with no shocks and a frame that has no give. I really think that if I was riding a plastic frame this day, the little bit of give that a plastic frame would have given me would have saved my heels, or at least saved them a little bit. Because when you're riding this setup, the only bit of shock absorption you have is in your wheels. There is nothing in the liner, nothing in the boot, and absolutely nothing in the frame. I'm making this video to hopefully save some of you from the injury I just got. If you are riding this setup, the M12s with any kind of metal frame, put some kind of shock in there, or just don't ride them with that boot at all. It is way too much of a risk and it is not worth it. I know there's a trade-off for when you put a shock absorber in your boot, uh, you're gonna lose a bit of that responsiveness, but trust me, it's not worth it. If you are gonna ride that setup without any shocks at all, stick to skate park and don't do anything with impact. Stick to just grinding flat boxes and maybe the odd down rail. Don't do any drops. Even a average drop could cost you skating for a long time and it is not worth it, trust me. And if you couldn't tell from the vibes I'm giving, this whole situation has actually put me off my favorite skate of all time, the Rossi's M12 but I'll talk more about that in another video. Now, this doesn't change my opinion on metal frames. I still absolutely love them. I think plastic just does not compare. Uh, that responsive feeling is just so unmatched and it feels so much better. I would highly recommend skating a new age boot with a metal frame though. And by that, I mean one that has room for a shock absorber on the inside. So any boot that has a flat bottom, like the Razer SL, the USD Sway or even the Thems. I think in that situation you'll be fine. But my new opinion is that I do think that metal and aluminum frames should be kept at the skate park where you're doing less impact because this injury isn't worth it. This situation really makes me wish that the M12 was a flat bottom boot or they had a new one coming. I know that even the latest, the fifth element that Rossi's made was a raised heel so you couldn't really put a shock absorber in there. So there's not really much hope of that but 
Ideally, I would just have this set up but with a flat boot so I could have a big shock absorber in there, even just a medium sized shock absorber. Now, if I was going to make the perfect metal frame, this is what it would be like. Now, you're gonna have to imagine this because I do not have the budget to make a CGI animation of this product. Uh, you should subscribe so one day I can have that budget, but anyway, all I would do, if I could update the solar frame, make a solar Brandon Drummond, <laughs> all I would do is add a very thin piece of plastic to the sole side of the frame. One that would screw in using the bolts that put the wheels in. And I'd probably just do it like a strip, just like the Symmetrix. Now I would keep this piece of plastic as thin as I possibly could. At its absolute max, I would want it to make the solar frame the same thickness as a normal frame, just on that one side. I wouldn't put it on the negative side, just because I don't think it's needed. I don't have any plans to do any negative top sides, and this slide's fine for negatives and metal slides fine on rails, so any situation where you're gonna be doing a negative, gonna slide fine, I think, and it won't be necessary. And I really wanna keep the slim profile of the solar. That's all I would do, just add that piece of plastic, and I think that would make the solar frame great for all kinds of skating. And as long as you had a good shock in your skate, I would even say it'd be perfect for skating street as well then. But anyway, that's all I have to talk about today. Learn from our mistakes, stay safe out there and protect your heels. I just want to give a huge thanks to James as well as the rest of my patrons and members and you for watching and I'll see you later on. Peace out.